I'm gonna walk through basically all the settings in a Canon, a Canon camera. We have a T7i to be exact, and this is gonna be pretty similar for all the T7 series, and even the 80Ds and 70Ds and all that. Canon uses the same internal software for all their cameras. So I'm gonna show you guys the best settings here. First off, you're gonna click that menu button. When you click that menu button, these four categories come up, but first we're gonna focus on shooting settings. This is where your actual uh, video settings will be. The first category we're going to select is the movie recording size. So you select that category and then you got all these different frames per second and resolutions that come up. Uh, you pick the highest frames per second and resolution that your SD card can handle. We have a 1080 60 frames. We do like 1080 60 frames the most. We could get a, you know, a camera that shoots in 4K 30 if we wanted to, if we went up in another quality, but we really like that 60 frames 1080. So we only focus on that. We don't focus on 4K because it's just not needed. Not enough people stream in it. So we really like that 1080 60 frames. Now, if you can't do 60 frames, 1080 30 is just fine. You will be fine with that. A lot of your music videos and professional movies and all that are shot in actually 24 frames per second. So to give you an idea, you can get professional quality with even 24 frames. But we, for, for vlogs and action videos and stuff, that 60 frames allows you to slow down the video uh, to half speed and you still get a smooth 30 frames so now we come down to sound recording so in sound recording there's auto and there's manual now the manual you have to literally set on the scale there on how much gain going into the camera you have and this is only good for if you have a very consistent uh, environment sound wise but I've made the mistake of leaving it in manual and then things got really loud and it destroyed the audio so I highly suggest just leaving it in auto and the camera can take care of it itself you don't need to focus on these two categories down here so page two here we have exposure composition this here is just a manual setting to set the brighter or darker of your lens of your camera you really just want to leave this as zero don't mess with that that's just leave it at zero now this ios speed just leave it at auto but the ios auto this is massive this is a huge setting i found out too late when i recorded too many videos that made got too fuzzy because i shot in dark so when you shoot in low light conditions that 25600 is just way too much ISO. You definitely don't want to shoot in that because what's going to end up happening, it makes your video so grainy. It might be brighter, but it makes it so grainy that it's unusable. And the 12.8 still did that, honestly. I used the 12.800 for a while and it still just had too much grain. And I finally got down to that 64, which is the lowest setting for the ISO Auto Max. And that really took care of it. But uh, just I'm telling you guys, make sure you have that set to 6400. You will save a lot of clips that are in low light conditions because of that. This auto lighting optimizer, I have to say I've played around with all of them a little bit and you can see it um, real time on the settings of the camera and I have it on low. I felt like that was the best setting for me. Uh, this is all personal preference here, but I did like the low. It kind of color corrects things basically is what this is. It's not real major. It's once again, it's just user of preference. So now we skip over to page three. This is a picture style. Once again, it's it's all through the camera. I just suggest auto here, Not nothing special. No reason to change this, There's, it's just very minor. Then you come down to white balance, you want that on auto as well. You can select your, basically your lighting condition, but I definitely, I mean, auto does just fine. So I, once again, just leave it in auto. <laughs> then you come over to page four. Now this is movie servo autofocus. This is actually pretty important. So when you're using an, ex an external microphone, the, the camera can make quite a bit of noise. The mic will pick up a lot of noise that the camera is making. So you definitely want to have this enabled because the camera makes less noise. So the mic doesn't pick up the camera doing ee beep 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 that kind of stuff. Now we come down to autofocus method. The facial plus tracking thing, it's really good because Canon has like one of the best autofocus as you guys know. If you're buying a Canon, you know you have the best autofocus in the game. So the smooth zone is good for when you have two faces in the picture or if you're having a lot of moving in and out of faces. The facial plus tracking will try to find a face too much and unfocus itself when you have like hand movements and stuff or if you're walking closer and farther away from the lens. I've just noticed smooth zone is better for a lot of motion inside the frame but if you're sitting down and talking it's fine. These next three categories you don't have to pay attention to as well they're just I mean they're nothing major. If you do want to uh, choose a grid display, this is where you do it. You, I mean, I'm not a fan of grid displays, so we have it off. But this is, once again, a personal preference setting, nothing too major. Now we come over to video uh, page 5. 
the movie digital is i'm gonna get into this in a little bit not right now this is the in camera stabilizer thing uh I'm, I'm not gonna point on this yet but that is a setting that you can change in here instead of live on the camera but i'll show you what that means exactly so we're gonna back out and we're gonna go to playback settings now and in here is just really uh nothing important other than like you can erase stuff I, it's nothing really important for the actual video settings you come into function settings this once again is nothing major you have the format card uh setting in here but i don't have a card in the camera of course um so you can format your card right there and then the wireless communications i'm not gonna get into this there is an app that you download and it tells you step by step on how to actually do this but uh, for this video i'm not gonna walk through how to connect your phone this is just basically the settings to do so all you have to do is download the app and it walks you step by step on there the auto power off is when the camera actually shuts off from um, inactivity and we have that set to two minutes because it seems like anything shorter it doesn't shut off or it shuts off too soon so two minutes seems to be the best the lcd brightness this is how you change the actual screen brightness we have it set on three it goes all the way up to seven as you've seen it gets really bright we just leave it on three that seemed to be the best power conserving and still be able to see in daylight now we're going to skip over to page three uh, page 3 and 4 are just that's nothing you have to worry about once again so you can back out of function settings then there's display display level settings this is just basically um, the way the screen looks I don't know if that makes sense this is how uh, when you hit the menu button from the main screen this is how it comes up you can choose how you would like it to look uh, I suggest a guided guided enabled enabled I've done it the other way there's I mean you can see down there the guided versus standard but it's nothing major it's not it's not really worth messing with so now we're going to get into the next part of this video this is the menu button i was clicking to get into that menu it's that top left button there that's how you get into that settings that i was just in now if you hit this q button this is how you pop up some of the settings that you can change while in live and some of these settings are in the menu button as well that we just went through this is that in camera stabilizer i was talking about so if i take the lens cap off you're going to see that when you take this in camera stabilizer it actually zooms it in and takes away some of the choppiness of the video i don't really like it because it does zoom in so much that you're like getting too close when you vlog but the the one setting there does help quite a bit you can see it basically just zooms in and reduces uh, shake in the camera because of it it's not a, a great setting not a bad setting uh, there's the autofocus again it's it's all the same stuff that we just went through pretty much the auto light the picture style all that that we just went through you can do on the camera as well you can do it either way it does not make a difference so next uh, you can hit the info button and that just shows how much info is on the screen then i'm going to switch it to the the on position because this is like the photography and if you tap that info button you actually have a built-in leveler leveler so yeah you just go to on click info and you have that stabilizer to make sure your tripod's nice and level so now we're going to go back to the movie mode and we're going to switch over to manual mode. I'm going to explain manual mode just a little bit. So this is your shutter speed right here. Your shutter speed determines how fast it captures movement basically. You can use the scroll up top to adjust that. If you're shooting in 60 frames per second you do want to shoot in 125 and if you're shooting in 30 frames per second you want to shoot in 60. Uh, but for photography it goes much much lower but for video it only goes to that point otherwise it would look really choppy. That makes it the most real time uh, motion blur and everything else. That's the best way to do it. Uh, that's the most closest to the human eye the way it captures uh, the video. Here is the f-stop. This is what I, I call it the f-stop. People call it other things. This is how you basically let amount of light into the lens. Think of it as like a, a funnel that you're like opening and closing. This is basically how you open up the lens and close the lens to let more light in or less light in. The higher you go, the less light goes in. The lower you go, the more light that comes in. F-stop is really important for shooting in low light conditions. If you want to shoot in low light, you definitely want a lens that goes under like 2.5. But really want to get down in those 1.8, 1.4s. That's where you can and get the best low light shots anything higher than like 2.5 you're gonna basically be too dark and you're not gonna have enough light going into the lens to let video be captured because everything is based on lighting so then ISO this is what I was talking about this is the dangerous thing I have it set to only go to 6400 but that's the high and it's it's too bright in here for it to actually show what I was talking about but 
you can see that it darkens up with the less iso and your your the best way to shoot is try to get the lowest iso that's the cleanest video you can get so you want to set your f-stop the lowest and then adjust your iso accordingly but don't go above 6400 no matter what i don't care if it's still pitch black just don't go above 6400 otherwise the entire video will be ruined so you set your f-stop as low as you can and then you adjust your ISO from there. I did 5.6 because most of the time when you're shooting in regular daylight conditions, 5.6 5 is what you're going to want to shoot in in like a 100 ISO. I'm going to come out of the front of the camera and this is how you actually zoom the camera itself. You can twist it, twist the lens. And over here there's two little buttons, two little slider things. There's a stabilizer on and off and that's actually the in, in, the in lens uh, stabilizer. There's an in camera stabilizer and then there's like one built into the lens. I had to remove my mic here to show you the autofocus one. There's the autofocus and manual focus. The autofocus, now it's in manual focus. It won't actually autofocus on the camera anymore. I'm gonna take my mic off and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we gotta get um, the lens cap so I can actually show you guys. So we take the lens cap here and we zoom in on it a little bit. You can see it's kind of blurry, but I'm I, I, see I'm, I'm doing that with the front bezel. I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. And you can actually adjust the focus how you want it. And you can sometimes get a cleaner focus than autofocus doing it this way. But the downside is if you move out of frame at all, if you move the camera at all, it's going to become unfocused. It's only focused to that certain spot. So if you're sitting down talking to the camera, it's a good thing to use because you can get really crisp, crispy like Rice Krispies. But other than that, if you're moving around or anything, it's not going to stay in focus for you. So definitely pretty much prefer camera stabilizer or the lens stabilizer on and I prefer autofocus on the lens as well because it just makes life easier. So next we're going to go back to the auto, which most people do shoot in, and that's okay because auto is pretty good except for that ISO 6400. I can't stress that enough. That's the biggest setting to change in auto. This is, that's where you can plug in your mic, your HDMI out, and your mini USB. They just go in right there so you can transfer files. And then there's your SD card spot on the other side. It just pops open and, and closes. This is where you actually put the battery in down bottom. And that's the battery, pretty small. The gray lever uh, actually pops the battery out and then you just push it in, it locks it in, then you shut the door. Pretty nice contraption Canon made, I like it a lot. And then right there, that button on the front is actually how you remove the lens. So you, you push it in and then you actually grab the entire lens and turn. You make sure you grab the back side of it down, lower down towards the camera because that's, that part actually doesn't spin. And to put it back in, there's a white square and the white square lines up with the white square on the camera. So that's pretty much just like a walkabout of a Canon camera with the recommended settings I use. So if you have a Canon, a Canon camera, these settings will transfer over to your camera as well. But I just kind of did a quick walkthrough of the settings. I didn't really go too far in depth or what each setting does. But I promise you through much trial and error that these are some of the best settings that you can use for vlogging or um, any real outdoor videos that you're going to film. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and then of course your favorite blonde which is my girlfriend's channel. It's going to be linked in the description. Make sure you go check her out because this is the camera that she films on and I film on. So check us both out, make sure to subscribe and there's going to be many more videos like this coming so stay tuned for that.